All right, we're going to continue with our study of Excel or use of Excel and learn how to do a trend line and graph with our graph. So first thing in this particular lab, this lab was dealing with the acceleration due to gravity in free fall. And we find that there is a relationship between distance and time squared that will allow us to get the acceleration due to gravity. So this video is showing you how to get that trend line. So first, if we want this to be our time squared, just wanna show you some formatting things that can be done and the squaring of this. So I wanna type my square over time and over my units, that's gonna be squared as well. And we're going to then go back up here to highlight those numbers and then in our home screen, we can go under format, format cells, and choose superscript. So that's one way you can, instead of using the caret, just kind of looks a little bit better to actually have it be in a superscript to be squared. So that's what we want to have in our title. So again, I'm going to format that to center it, maybe make that just a little bit bigger and bold. And I always like the units to be below the word. So there you go, got to wrap text. There it is. So to square it, I'm simply just want to square my average time. So I want to tell the computer that I'm using a formula. So it's going to be equal. My time, average time is in F6. So I'm going to put down F6 caret square. It enters. There is my square of 0.418. Go to the corner, bottom right corner of the cell, drag that down. Change your decimal places to be what you would like them to be to match your other data, which in this case is gonna be three decimal places. And now I have my distance and average time. So that is all that I want to graph is distance versus average time. So next I wanna take just this because I need this to be on the x-axis. I'm gonna copy and paste that down here just because that's the data table that I'm going to want to use. Remember when I paste it, I wanna use this paste special so that I don't copy the formula, but instead just copy the words that are or the values that the formula has. So I'm gonna put distance down there as well but I want to paste that. Some formatting, grab text, grab text, grab text. Notice it didn't carry my superscript formatting, so I'm going to go back and do that again. Superscript, make it all look very professional and nice. So the whole point of using Excel is to create these very nice looking professional data tables and that it allows us to analyze the data very, very easily. Set those numbers apart somehow. And then for here, my border around that, remember that you can change the row height make it look a little bit larger, fit everything in there a little bit better. I'm gonna put the borders around everything. I already did that, but I'm gonna center everything. And for this column, I definitely want my numbers to reflect the values that you where I use to measure them, which is three decimal places. And here I was able to get to the nearest 10, right? Even though I reported at the whole number, I was able to get to the nearest 10. So that gives me the data that I want to graph, right? So I'm just gonna make that stand out a little bit more. And now to graph it, I want to, again, highlight the data that I need to graph, go into insert and choose the XY scatter, right? So there is my data. So we're gonna put our chart title. So I would say this is distance versus Time. We're going to add axis titles and making sure that your numbers match. This is time squared in units of seconds squared.
So the same thing should work here. If I go back into this now and highlight just that, I'm gonna be able to go back home. It's looking at it as a word, and go into format. But I could do that here, let's see. I think I wanna do that here, there we go. Superscript, okay, down here, get this little arrow beside it, and superscript. Go. Now the error that goes with this, the time, would be our standard deviation. So we're gonna get the, we do want that for our error bars. Um, so distance um, would be time, we have time squared and the square of that standard deviation would be what's on our horizontal axes. Um, in this case, this axis would have our standard deviation for our error bars, which is be the instrumental limit of error of 0 0.05. So we'll come back to that as we play with this. This is going to be distance. And units of centimeters. It is plus, plus, minus 0 0.05 centimeters. in our standard deviation. So remember that is an equal STUV. Put in your numbers, which is going to be the measurements of those. Really was we're going to want to use the standard deviation squared. Right? So that's going to equal H six for me, here it two. Yours might be a completely different cell, remember? So you can see these numbers are gonna be way, 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 way low, which are not really going to show up on the map at all, nor will the distance measurement of 0 0.05. So for the most part, we are going to ignore these standard deviation values because they are not gonna have much of an effect on so if I even go to three decimal places, you can see for the most part, standard deviation, especially when we square it. And the reason we square it is that's how we say that that's what happened into this calculation. Right? So it was not just straight up time, it was time squared. All right, so now that I have my graph, let me just show you how we're gonna do this trend line. So here's our graph again. So this looks like this is a data point that's off, which would be in here, right, our second point. I go back and take a look at our numbers, which is interesting because they definitely look, um, no, it's actually down here, right, 0.063. The average is 0.25, that is correct. So they all look pretty close to one another in measurement, but definitely off on our graph. All right, so not gonna change anything here, so that looks pretty good. So when you hit the plus or charge elements, you can come over here where it says trend line, hit the arrow to the right of that, because we wanna choose more options. And what we want to make sure we're chosen is the linear, but sometimes you might have the exponential or logarithmic. Make sure you're aware of what you're looking for. And we're going to display the equation on the line. Perfect. So you can see the equation set up right here. So all I have to do is close that out, and I'm pretty much done. That is the equation of the line that is our best fit for this data that we collected. You can see this goes way above compared to the others. Uh, within the margin of error, I don't think it's quite there. So that's one that we could almost say to throw out. But don't do that so quickly. 
Um, we can go back and see what effect that has. Like if I were to go down here and take out 35s, standard reaction time, which is this number, right? I remove that. gave us 498, right? If I didn't have that data point. So these are the some of the things that you can be analyzing. So this was the um, point, this was the 35. And then over here, oh my goodness, what was that average time squared? Point 01, point 01 was our time squared there. That's the standard division. Point O zero point O six three. Putting that number back in there. So that's the nice part of when you graph, if you play around with these numbers, you can see how what effect it has on your graph. So at 475.8, we would then calculate the acceleration due to gravity, right? So from this number, that is giving us the slope of the line. Right? So this is giving us the slope. So what we say is that the slope in this particular graph is equal to one half the acceleration due to gravity. So if you can pull off the numerical value of slope and plug it into here, then you have 475.18 is equal to one half G. So what does G equal? G is going to equal two times 475.8 divided Multiplying that out. Two times 475. 951.6 meters per second squared is equal to G. Comparing that to 981, okay, we'll come back to that. But then I'm going to take a look at to say, okay, what happens if I do eliminate this point? So if I were to eliminate that point and say it's not following our trend line, right? I get 498. So if I force a zero, zero in intercept, I do that and I take out that number, my new value, let me try if I could get that into another color. My new value for the slope is now 498.08. And that equals one half G. So two times 498.08 is equal to G, one over G. Not one over G, sorry. Just G, just G. I'm not supposed to screw. Just G. So four or two times 498.08. This gives us 996.16 equal to G. So what I want to do now is calculate the percent difference, right, of each one of those. So the percent difference for each one of these values, okay, so our percentage difference, what we want to do is we want to take our value, so the percent difference, right, is equal to our value, right, so recorded value, minus accepted value, which for us would be 981, divided by the accepted value, 
15 times 100%. That will give us our values. So if we take 951.6. So 951.6 minus 981 divided by 981 times 100%. So if I take my data as is, I would get a percent difference of 951.6 divided by 981. Oops. I get a two, or almost a three, 2.997. percent error. So keep in mind that this is an absolute value, right? Very good. What do I get if I use my other number where I assumed a zero, zero point? So remember, this other number comes from you saying that you're going to force this line to go through zero, zero, right? Which is a valid point, but your data didn't go through zero, zero. It actually had a Y intercept there. So with it being in a um, percent difference of, we'll just compare these two ways. So for that data, if I were to throw out that one point is equal to 996.16 minus 981 all over 9. 81, right, equals G, not equals G, equals my percent difference, so that's times 100%. So over here, that percentage comes out to be 996. a 1.5% error. So this one is a 1.5%. Both very, very good. So I would say with certainty that we can say our accepted value for the acceleration due to gravity is somewhere between these values and is close to the 981. So we were able to use this method to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. Hope this helps. Good luck with your graphing.